my name's Jo and welcome to Aussie Homeschool Adventures. It's so good to see you. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. As I said, my name's Jo. I'm a homeschool mum of two beautiful girls in Sunshine Coast in Queensland, Australia. And today on my channel, I'm going to share with you some of our resources that we've been using to learn about Hass. So um, Australian Hass in particular, obviously, because we're Australian. So Hass is Humanities and Social Sciences, I believe is what it, the acronym stands for as far as the government is concerned. But basically for me, it's about teaching my kids all about Australia and its history and its geography and government and things like that. So I have a bunch of resources here around me. I've got some books, I've got some curriculum that I've purchased and I'm just going to give you a look at all of it and have a little chat about them as we go. So my girls are nine, just turned nine and turning 11 in about a month's time. So that's their ages and they're working at about a grade three and four level, sort of four and five, somewhere in that vicinity between grades three and five. How does that sound? So I'm going to start with the books. These are books that I have purchased from a variety of different places. I probably mentioned them in other videos and on my Instagram, but I'm just going to combine them all into one video here on my YouTube channel. So I have this one here. This is Rich Knight, If I Ran the Country. So this is all about um, politics and it's not specific to Australia, but it's a great one for introducing kids to the different political styles of like different political things, different ways of governments are formed. So we're learning about democracy at the moment and we're actually creating our own country. So it's um, quite conversational in its style. It's talking to you, it has lots of good information in there. It's not specific to Australia, but it's um, a really good one for learning about politics. So that's that one, If I Ran the Country. Then I have this one. This is The Young Dark Emu. This is from Bruce Pascoe. Uh, it's a winner of Booksellers Choice Awards. It won the Premier's Award in 2020 for literature. It's got a whole bunch of different medals on here. It was Children's Book of the Year at one point. So this is a semi-story, living history sort of style book. It's got lots of illustrations and it's a little bit more Aboriginal focused on the history of Australia. So we have, we've flicked through this and read little bits um, and we will certainly do more as we go through our studies over the next probably few years really. This is not going to date. Um, so. The little blurb on the back, Bruce Pascoe uses the diaries of early explorers and colonists to show Australia, show us the Australia where Aboriginal people did build houses, did build dams and wells, and productively did farm the land, a truer history. So there you go, that's that one. I have Nicole Stewart's What's Out There, an amazing plants, rocks, creatures, and cultures that make Australia extraordinary. This is a stunning book with a whole variety of different information on animals, um, a little bit about First Peoples, um, some of our flora and fauna of Australia. So, yeah, animals, things like that. So this is a beautiful book. I'm pretty sure I got this one from Kmart, but it may not be at Kmart. No, sorry, I got this one from a local bookshop. So check out your local bookstores for this one. I then have The Story of Australia from Don Watson. I got this one from Big W. This is just a, um, probably a little bit more of a traditional sort of story, like history book a little bit. Um, pictures and information in here. Um, yeah. We've read bits and pieces out of this as we've researched different things about different people. So, and it goes through history from, I'm pretty sure, ancient Australia right through until present, supposedly 1990 to present. So, this book was published in 2000 and something 2021 so 
fairly recent. So this one is a good like textbooky style sort of book, but it's not too heavy. Um, we have this one, this is a recent addition to our homeschool library, our sunburnt country. This is your more Charlotte Mason style living book. Once again, we'll probably read through bits of this. Um, probably use this as a little bit more of the spine of our history for Australia, perhaps. Um, I'm not 100% sure yet. We're still just sort of doing bits and pieces with it. I grabbed this one for our, we were doing a research project and I picked this one up from Big W. So this just is a really short window, 1806 to 1830. It's Australian Geographic. So it's got lots of just short snippets of information, timeline, lots of photos, things like that. So it's not a bad book. They've got a whole bunch of these. There's so many um, in this series. So they would probably work out fairly expensive if you, if you were to buy the whole set. But this one I got from Big W, it was pretty sure it was under $10 for that one book. I can't remember now. Um, and then I have this one, oh, the big book of Australian history. This one's another more information-y, textbook-y style one. But once again, still lots of um, painting style pictures and bits and pieces of information so we can, you know, I wouldn't sit down here and read them verbatim word for word from here, things that are in here, um, but it's a good reference point if they're interested in something and we've been reading about it in something else that we can flick over to here and look it up and see what we can find. So yeah, that one's by, it's Peter McInnes, yeah, Peter McInnes. So I grabbed this one online. I think it was um like not book depository, but I can't remember. An online bookstore. I'll try and leave links in the description box below for most of these resources. And the last one I picked up, no, second last, sorry. I've got another one that I'll grab. Um, I have this one, so this is just a little picture atlas. It was probably younger than I thought it was when I bought it. I bought it online without actually looking at it. So it's a little simplistic, um, but very nice, brightly colored, um, bits of information about all the different states with um, cute little, you know, left the flaps with facts on there about things. So every state gets a page. So it's quite short and sweet, but still a very beautiful book. And then this one is the amazing Australian road trip from Jackie Hosking and Leslie Vamos. So this is once again, probably even more of that Charlotte Mason. It's a story of a journey of them traveling around Australia. And then in underneath here, there's lots of information about various things of what they're seeing in the right country, like in the state that they're in. So, you know, they're here at um, Kakadu Park. Kakadu National Park is one third the size of Tasmania at 20,000 square kilometers. And there's a few other facts there about Kakadu. So this has beautiful pictures and illustrations and a reasonable amount of information in it. So a great one for younger children or children that like picture books sort of style learning. The picture book that we have used, it is Are We There Yet? by Alison Lester. So this is more, um, not a lot of information in this one. Very much a story of a family's journey around Australia. We read through it as a family and then researched the states as we were in each state at that time in the story. So the girls really enjoyed this book um, and we had great fun reading it as a family. So it is a really nice story though. I do like this book. So that's all the books that I have. And then I've got, oh no, sorry. I actually have other books here. Um, now these ones are a bit unique. They came as part of Jane Goodall's Roots and Shoots program. That was an invitation to be a part of. It's a free program for school and homeschoolers. Applications have closed for 2022. They do open again sometime probably soon for 2023. And you can apply for a box for your school or your homeschool. And they are the most stunning books and they are just, and it's free. So it just blows my mind. So these are two of the books that came in this year's box, Living Landscapes. So this is a 
um, a journey through Australia's rich and diverse indigenous cultures. Um, so it talks about each different sort of area and there's beautiful photos of wildlife and the area and um, well, things like that. So this one, these books are absolutely stunning. So we'll probably read through this together and um, yeah, learn about some of our different indigenous areas. So there's that one. And then this one was Australia's Amazing Islands. These were both in this year's um, book. So we're probably not going to study these, but once again, just beautiful books. And I love having books that my kids can just pick up and flip through and look at and read and hopefully learn random bits of information about Australia and its diverse flora and fauna and things like that. So that one's that one. There was two other books that were included in this year's box. They aren't specific about Australia. I will show them just because I can. I won't flick through them. There was the What on Earth, Plants That You've Never Heard Of, and then the most beautiful book on the universe and the solar system. So that was this year's Roots and Shoots box, and I love it, and I am so grateful for Dr. Jane Goodall's program for Roots and Shoots for schools and homeschoolers being included in that. Then I have two books from last year's Roots and Shoots box as well that we loved looking at last year and we will look at continue to use. Amazing Australia. So this is a whole beautiful book again with lots of great bits of information on our, um, mostly on animals and a little bit on plants and stuff in Australia. Um, but just stunning photos and great child-friendly information. Um, little bits about some of the islands and places in the back of this as well. So we have that one as a house book. And then this one was another one that was the local safari um, wildlife adventures at home in Australia. So similar again, um, information and beautiful photos. This one's got a little bit more about some of the different types of fauna rather than just the flora, um, flora rather than the fauna. So more on plants and a little less on animals. Um, there are animals in here though. So yeah, definitely a beautiful book to have in our collection. I believe you can still buy these books from their website. So jump over and have a look if you're interested in buying them for your library. Then I have a couple of board games that I grabbed from Kmart. We've got Race Around Australia and I Spy Australia. So these are just some of our other ways that we can incorporate house learning into our school. From Unbound Homeschooling, I've got a collection of her resources that I have bought. Um, one I have won. So this one, I was lucky enough to win a copy of her hassle-free bulletin that she's gotten printed in print form. Um, this came and my 11 year old snavelled it and spent like an hour or so reading through it. And she's working on the Sudoku puzzle on the back and she really has enjoyed it. So this one um, is, yeah, it's a self done, like done by different homeschool families and that it's a, um, yeah, really quite a well done little simple newspaper for kids to learn more about house stuff. So it's not solely house to focus, but there is definitely a house aspect to it. So that one's really cool. Then I have her two curriculum units um, programs that she's done. So I have program one and I have program two. We are still working through program one. I will be honest, we haven't finished it. So program one was Australia and me. I got it from her at the start of the year when it came out and we've worked through probably just over a quarter of it and I have really enjoyed what we've done. We've just um, not been doing as many extra subjects in the afternoon. We've been a bit, um, 
I don't know, not doing our loop afternoon subjects as much. We've been just getting through our core subjects. So we haven't picked up house again for a little while. So this has been a really good one though. Um, lots of different activities, different styles of things you can do. Everything from um, like games with different things and booklet work to fill out and things like that. So it comes with beautiful parent guide. Um, both the kids get a little workbook to work in. Um, so there's like, there's even a little maze in there. Um, as you can see, this is what we haven't gotten to. So blank things to fill in. Um, art projects to do in here as well. So yeah, that's really cool. Um, so yeah, so both the girls got a workbook each. She has these beautiful photo timeline cards from memorable moments in history in Australia. Just grab them out. So they are um, quite beautiful. So, hang on. So, yes, the kids have enjoyed looking through these and reading about them. And we've. Um, done a little bit of rabbit trail rabbit trails with them my kids aren't big rabbit trail researchers though they tend to just be like oh okay and take it as that and move on um we played this game that comes with it which was pin the state on australia i will insert a little clip maybe just up here of the kids and i playing this you have to blindfold yourself and try and match each state up to the state of Australia. Um, I printed it and laminated it. It came printed and I've laminated it just to make it last a bit longer. So they really enjoyed that. There was this game here, State of Origin, matching up cards with different answers to different information. So they really enjoyed that. That one was lots of fun. So quite a few games in this, which is really nice for something different way of learning. A beautiful big printed map of Australia. Um, we made some little models of the coastline of Australia that we still have to paint. Terrible. Um, and then each different element of it has these little lap books. So there's one here for Australia. Um, and then there's like our local area was one of the areas, states and territories. So they all open up and have, so we've drawn our map of Queensland in here. And one of our yeah, so we worked through this one. Um, then there's like our family and then the inside one is me. So we haven't finished all of this, like I said. I'm hoping that after our break from mid-semester, so we're taking our mid-semester break at the moment, well, one week anyway, we'll probably take another week at some other point, um, we can get back into a better rhythm with our loop afternoon subjects. So that's unit one. It comes from her website. It is, I've written it down because I can't remember. I jumped on and had a look. I paid about, 80, about $89 for my two kids. So it depends on how many kids you've got, how much it costs, because you've got to get more workbooks printed, obviously. So jump on her website. I'll be sure to link it down below and you can check it out. And then she's just released unit program two. So program one was Australia and me. Program two is Australia and the world. Now this looks beautiful. I'll be honest, I haven't used it with my kids yet. I've had a look at it. Um, my oldest picked it up and had a look through some of the photos and the cards and was like, oh wow, this is really cool. So I may leave unit one and do unit two for a bit and come back to unit one and mix them together. You don't have to do them as a separate, like program one by itself and program two by itself. You can mix and match them around. They're just different elements of the Hass learning requirements, requirements from the government to align with the national curriculum. There is no right or wrong way of using this program. So I'm just gonna grab program two. So program two, Australia and the world. These look beautiful. So this is like our, I'm pretty sure, this is like the parenty sort of teachery. Mm. No, actually this is more the student sheets. This is, a stu this is the student worksheets. So there's bits for them to fill out. Um, 
and some beautiful photos in here. Um, information and whatnot. So, oh, look. The wombat. I love wombats. Um, so this looks really beautiful. Um, oh, bring on summer. I want to go swimming there. Um, so this looks really cool. So that's like the student worksheety part of that. And then there are these yeah, slippery cards. Um, so these are like little fact cards. So you get a photo and then on the back it has some information. So this one's like about Byron Bay. Australia's climate is variable due to its large geographical size and its separation from the polar regions by the Southern Ocean. Australia holds many heat related records and has an area with the hottest summer climate and the highest sunshine duration. So beautiful cards. This one's now about Sri Lanka and there's information here about Sri Lanka. There are distinct wet and dry seasons in Sri Lanka due to its tropical location. Generally the temperature is very hot year round. There are two monsoons that affect the weather throughout the year. Um, so beautiful cards from the different countries. So Australia and the world, this one is comparing Australia to Sri Lanka and um, um, Papua New Guinea, I had to look. So beautiful cards, absolutely stunning. So these have like locations, fauna and flora, well fauna, I should say, and flora. I always get those around the wrong way because they sound so similar. Look at the echidna. So these are really cool. Um, my kids will thoroughly enjoy just, I think, looking through these. They'll probably freak out at some of the animals because I have girls, but I am absolutely positive that there'll be boys out there that'll be like, oh, that's awesome. So, you know, it's all good. They will survive. Um, so there's those little cards that come in with it. These are little cool little um, like focus cards that you pop this on the table. Today we're focusing on flora, landscapes. Um, so there's like a whole bunch of, of those focus cards that you can pop on the table while you're having your discussions. Stay. Um, then there are these ones. So these are more like the parenty sort of cards, activities. So there's that same image again. Um, there's some definitions and then like different cultures and then she's given a list of activities on the back of things that you could do. So um, for example, this one's learning about different cultures. As a family, go to migrationheritage.newsouthwales.gov.au slash stories and read about migration stories. Make a list, number two, make a list of the ways your family culture and heritage are both similar and different to that of a focused country. Watch a YouTube video. Um, yeah, so there's a few different suggestions there. I'm not going to read them all out, obviously. Um, natural disasters. So, and they've all got like different activities, including like game selections and things like that. So you can um, pick and choose the activities that work best for your kids and your family. So I'm really excited about this one and I think the kids will have a lot of fun. And then I think these are some of my most favorite things in this curriculum are uh, these beautiful big photo cards that, you know, we can pop up on the wall and talk about it. So that's like the covery bit. Part one is Papua New Guinea and um, Sri Lanka. So yeah, basically we're comparing, completing the lessons. So yeah, there's a whole list of instructions here on the back that I'm not gonna read out loud now. Um, but yeah, there's lots of different ideas and these beautiful photos that are just stunning and will make gorgeous displays in your learning space. So that's unit, well, keep saying unit. Um, I think she calls it program. So program two, Australia and the world. That's pretty much our HASS resources that we are using to learn about Australian history and geography and things like that in our home school at the moment. We're not using them all simultaneously, obviously, um, but they are here on hand. They float about because I let my kids pick up things and look at them whenever they want to. Just because it's a school thing doesn't mean they can't look at it. If they go, oh, I want to read that book, go for it. 
I often will leave the um the books from Roots and Shoots have been sitting out on my coffee table and in the lounge room just so the kids can pick them up and have a flick through and read them, which they do. Particularly my older one. She still she loves to like pick up books and look through them and will read bits and pieces. My younger one still she's not so keen on reading yet. I'm hoping that she'll get better as her reading level goes up and her confidence grows, but she's not there yet. And that's okay. No pressure from me about that. I'm totally fine with it. So, yeah, all these books are around in our homeschool, in our homeschooling space, in our land room, living area space, so the kids can pick them up and have a look through them. The curriculum boxes float about so the kids can have a look. And if they find an activity, they go, oh, can we do this one? Sure, let's do it. So, yeah, it's a really great, flexible um, learning area for us. I'm not super strict with it and I'm not super um, rigid with it, even using the curriculum stuff that I bought from Jamie, it's a guide. So you can use it however works best for you and your kids. Anyway, I hope you found that helpful. I hope you found some new resources that you might want to try out for your homeschooling family. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Please hit subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video with your other homeschooling family and friends. Have a fantastic week, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye! Bye.